Empathy is so critically important. And most people hear the word empathy and they're like, sure, you know, I have empathy. That's pretty straightforward. But there really are keys to it that are essential to understanding. And some people confuse empathy with sympathy. I hear people that work in a dental office and I'm like, you literally don't care. You've done this so many times and it's so normal to you, but I'm scared to death because I'm a patient and I have no idea what's happening. And it may be small to you, but it's big to me. It's really hard to just be silent if you're the TC or the patient educator. After you ask one of these tough questions, like, are you in pain? You don't have to keep talking. You, there are times when you should just give them the time and the space to answer. Welcome back to the special edition of the Full Arch Advantage podcast. I'm your host, Gary Bird. I'm the founder of SMC National, where we help you create, convert, and close more full arch cases so you can grow the way that you want. And today, this special series is really going to help you grow because we have a special guest who is going to be working with us with several of our other guests, and her name is Margaret. Margaret is the founder and chief advisor of i3 Ignite and is an implant marketing and operational genius. She actually was the former Clear Choice COO for many, many years, and she helped them scale from the ground up. So this is gonna be a set of shows that are really gonna help you and your practices grow around Full Arch. In today's episode, Margaret and I are gonna be interviewing Greg, who's the CEO and founder of GNA Consultant. And we're gonna be talking about how to improve your consult approach. So you're going to want to stay tuned. Um, so Greg, we've worked together a lot on, on the consult part of this whole conversion from a prospective patient to a patient. And we both understand how critical it is because you can do everything right. If you do everything right until you get to the consult and you, you blow that consult, it's, it's a disaster. And, and you never, not never, there's maybe a two to 3% chance that you will ever get to talk to that person again, no matter how much follow-up you do. So um, I'd love to just um, explore that whole, what makes for a successful consult um, with you. Um, so the let's start for just a minute with the patient journey, because that's where um, we like to start everything um, so, is from that marketing perspective. So. Could you talk with us a little bit about what you think are the keys to delivering an exceptional patient experience for the consult? Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak on it. Yes, Margaret, you and I have worked together quite a bit. You know, with the patient journey, and some of it may sound very simple and straightforward or basic, if you will, but really emphasizing it and making sure the team's all on the same page with it. The consistency pieces are critically important to being successful at it. You know, first and foremost, empathy. Empathy is so critically important. And most people hear the word empathy and they're like, sure, you know, I have empathy. That's pretty straightforward. But there really are keys to it that are essential to understanding. And some people confuse empathy with sympathy. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you have to have gone through the experience of not having teeth or having teeth that need to be removed necessarily. But really, it's that the feelings behind what they're saying, the why behind the what, the emotions and the emotional impact or the motivation behind why they're coming in to see you in the beginning or even why they're sitting before you during that console and really earning that connection, earning the right to make a presentation, if you will, when it comes time to, you know, the big mighty dollar finance, right? Because that's so much further down in the consult um, when there's so much work in the beginning that needs to happen. So in that patient journey, empathy is so critically important. And understanding the patient in front of you, understanding if you're doing direct to consumer marketing, how that differs so much from a referral. You know, I'm working with a client right now and uh, one of the employees that are coming on board as a treatment coordinator comes from the specialist market and, you know, is really good at what they do for a specialist they're working for and helping her to understand the difference in the client mm, population yeah. between direct to consumer and a referral. 
And then Gee. lastly, and there's others, right? And you and I have talked about this too, is really understanding, you know, the unique selling proposition of what is unique about your particular practice that can differentiate, because it's all about differentiation when it comes to full arch. What differentiates your doctors, your clinic, your practice, your team compared to every other that's in your metropolitan area or in your state or in your fill in the blank that's going to guide that patient to a yes and give them the confidence that, yeah, you know what? This is the place that I should get my brand new smile compared to others. So those are some of the key keys that I think that are really going to make a difference for any particular practice. Hey, I got something crazy to share with you and I'm going to get you right back to the show. I promise. So we have an event called a liner con coming up next year. And this month we're giving away a buy one, get one free. We're going to be partnering with clear correct. And this is going to be one of the biggest events that we've ever done in Nashville, Tennessee, in the biggest hotel in America. If you want to come to this again, we're going to give you a buy one, get one free. We want to meet you in person. Just go to alinercon.com and we're going to teach you how to create, convert, close, and even some clinical components around clear aligners. So don't miss this event. Go check it out now. Back to the show. So I hear three things there, Greg. So I hear empathy. I hear understanding the different kinds of patients, specifically patient or doctor referrals versus um, marketing. And then the UVP, unique value proposition. What makes you different? Just real quickly on the empathy side, because I'm really curious about this, because sometimes I hear people that work in a dental office and I'm like, you literally don't care. You've done this so many times and it's so normal to you, but I'm scared to death because I'm a patient and I have no idea what's happening. And it may be small to you, but it's big to me. I think we've all been to the doctor before where I walk into the doctor and I'm like, hey, I'm kind of worried about this. And they're like, meh. And it's just like, well, no, 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 it's not man. Like I'm really scared and you're acting like it's not a big deal. How, how do, how do offices avoid that, uh, falling into that trap of empathy and how do you even measure it? Like, Hey, we're being empathetic or not. Margaret, I think you have some thoughts and I'd love to get your thoughts. Greg. Could I just add one there, which is <clears throat> what is empathetic listening sound like? Yeah. And I I love that because empathetic listening sounds like a a lot of things, but there really are steps to it, uh, to empathetic listening. You know, one of them that I like is really paying attention, paying attention to the person that's in front of you, not being distracted by somebody walking by or by your something like your phone, right? Or not paying attention, making eye contact and things of that nature. Another is paraphrasing. And that doesn't mean repeating back. What does that mean? Does that mean repeating back? No, it doesn't mean re- because that gets super annoying if you're just repeating the same thing. But it's making sure it's repeating to show that you're understanding what they're sharing. So you get that that buy-in and listening that, yes, I- I'm following what you're saying and then asking the next question and leading down a path and showing that you're paying attention, which is critically important. And those are just some of the pieces of empathic listening as you're keying in and making that eye contact and really focusing in on what they're saying. Um, And then some identifying pieces. Again, and I shared earlier, it's not so much that, oh, well, I I know what it's like to have, you know, dental pain because, you know, you haven't been able to chew on that side of your mouth for the last six months. However, have you been in pain before? Have you played sports and somebody slid into your leg and you've had a bruise there? Or have you run into the end table or has your little brother smacked you upside the head or have you fill in the blank, right? So have you experienced pain? So you identify with, you know, the emotion or what they're experiencing and you do it in a genuine way. And then going back to what Gary said, I think that's critically important. If you're in a surgical center or if you've been doing this a lot, you almost become numb to it because you've seen it so many times that, oh, it's not that big of a deal, right? Well, it is that big of a deal. It's just like when they ask the question, you know, is it painful? Well, different people's pain response is different ways. Some people can have a huge tolerance of pain and can deal with it. It's like a mosquito bite, right? Some people like a mosquito bite, they're like, oh, so it itches a little bit. I get a mosquito bite and I'm sitting there scratching at it, calamine lotion, you know, I'm putting like mounds of everything on it, toothpaste, you know, you name it. I'm going to use every trick in the book so I don't have to, to feel that itch and scratch at it, right? As a kid, they put the, the socks on my hands, right? And wrap the tape around it because I'd scratch it in the middle of the night. Everybody has a different tolerance for the pain. So 
being able to understand and say different people respond different ways. It's really being honest with them and saying, I, you know, this, these are the different levels of response mechanism and it could be this or it could be that. When you level with people and you don't have to give them all the blood and gore details, right? I mean, you don't have to go down that path. But if you are, if you level with people and give them, you know, an honest response, it, they'll know whether or not you're being genuine. And that's a part of the empathy piece. And those are the things that really make the difference, again, back to the differentiation of making that emotional connection with patients during the consult, all the way leading up to it, but during a consult that earns you the right to then make that presentation when you share about, you know, this is what it's going to cost. This is the financial commitment, the investment in your brand new smile to get you to healthy living and identifying with what they've shared their motivation is. These are critically important pieces that really differentiate you from everybody else that's in this game, if you will, right? Because it's super competitive. And I think that's critically important to get to that point in a consult. So uh, one of the things I found is that um, it's really hard to just be silent if you're the TC or the patient educator after you ask one of these tough questions, um, like, are you in pain? You don't have to keep talking. You, there are times when you should just give them the time and the space to answer. These can be very emotionally triggering for some people because they've been battling this for decades. And, and so they need time to think about it, kind of pull their thoughts together and respond, especially when the questions are what they should be, which are Really getting at the the why are you here? How can we help you live your life, the life that you want to live? So um, I would just say, don't be afraid of that silence. It means they're really thinking. You've asked a really good question. Well, I love that. And, and here's what else I would say to that. And, and Gary brought it up before. You know, even if they've done all their research and you have one of these really savvy patients that's come in, or maybe they've even gone to consults at other places before. So they're very highly educated on what's coming, right? When, when they're in the consult itself, it's still a tremendous amount of information for them to take in. Whereas we're sharing the information and, you know, in a consult or in a surgical center or in a practice, and we know all of the information behind what we're sharing. And we deal with it day in, day out, week in, week out. And we've done this hundreds of times, if you will, if we're well skilled at it, where this is all brand new information for them. It's another reason why during the consultation, it doesn't matter how good you are at presenting the materials and information and options for financing and what the needs based is and all of that. That's why you see that the percentage of same day acceptance of treatment when it comes to the big cases like full arch, that it's it's really not that high of the overall acceptance of cases that actually happen in these clinics. And that it's really that follow up. And, and you alluded to it, Margaret, and you and I know this so, so well, is that it's the follow up because all of this vast amount of information that they need to digest. And it goes to your point of that. Don't be afraid of the silence of just the pause of let them take in the information you've just shared with them, especially if it has to do with third-party financing that they may not be familiar with. And you've given them a couple of options and here's the payment terms and how many months and here's the percentage rate and you qualify for this. And suddenly they may not have considered before some of the options. This may be brand new information. And they're now trying to think, okay, it went from theory to reality, I can actually, this can actually happen for me. Whereas I haven't been able to smile in a family reunion picture for the last 10 years. I haven't been able to eat a steak in the last 15 because that top denture I got five years ago just flops around. I really don't like it and I've never really worn it in the last four years or it's given me abrasions the last couple of years. So I don't, I mean, fill in the blank with any of those, right? So this is really a game changer for them. And they're going from that theoretical realm of, you know, I wonder, I kind of sort of, I'm dreaming this would be nice to the, this is a possibility for me now. Like I'm going to be making a decision on it. So Margaret, have you had that experience? I know with all of the, all of your experience, I'm sure you have with teams, but that's really, a, I mean, that's a big bridge 
to come yeah. across and to give them space for that. Yeah. So there's a there's kind of an operations piece to this um, whole process that I think gets forgotten a lot, and that's this whole um, what we've called the handoff, hand up, um, and it's the this. I mean. A lot of practices think that this is a TC only deal or, or patient finance coordinator deal or whatever, but that nobody else really has much of, an, of a responsibility in this whole patient conversion process. And you and I have had great discussions around this, and we believe that that is absolutely not true. And that um, <clears throat> if you are not a well coordinated team, in the practice when it comes to this, then you are just going to, you're going to miss way too often in terms of getting patient conversion. Um, do you want to talk about that hand off and hand up piece for a minute? Yeah. So I love to talk about, uh, you know, I, some people call it the hand up. I like to call it the hand up. Uh, I, I think of when I was a kid and we'd be, you know, running around and ride our bikes to the park and there'd be a fence that you'd have to try to get over and yet interlock your hands and you give them the lift up over the fence, you know, because it really is a hand up that you're trying to give the next person in the continuity of care all the way from, you know, the marketing, hopefully giving the hand up to the person taking the lead call. And then when they come into the practice at the front desk and then to the, what I call the patient concierge, which is the first person that greets them, that brings them back to the threshold, back into the clinical area, because it could be as simple as a comment that can happen. Uh, as they're taking a CT scan, right? And it, they could say to a dental assistant, oh, you know, my spouse was supposed to come with me, but they got called into work. You know, that little comment seems innocuous. It, it doesn't even seem like a big deal. But that little comment being then shared with the treatment coordinator, or the financial coordinator at the end of the process can give them an opportunity to be able to know that this might not really happen today or make a comment, uh, you know, so does your spouse support you being here today? Even though they might know the answer, but saying that allows them to share that piece of information and it can help to curtail the dialogue in a direction that's more favorable, like, oh, well, so they actually are trying to help me along and they're not going to try to pressure me into something of making the decision right then and there. You know, one of those, oh, act now or, you know, in the next 30 minutes and wait, there's more, you know, those types of infomercial type of situations. But passing that information along in whatever format, if it's digital, great. But then again, in some of the practices that have, you know, really high volume, things are moving at a quick pace, you know, having to go into the, you know, into a machine or into their patient chart, just like we talked about keeping that connection with the patient the whole time. If you have to look at something electronically, maybe it's just a sticky note on a chart that walks and follows with the patient, or some call it a yellow sheet or a green sheet, or call it a pink sheet or a blue sheet. It doesn't even matter, but somehow, some way, create a system where information can get passed along, whether it's at the front desk or at the end. Obviously, if it's somebody taking a lead call, you want that electronically. It's a little difficult. You know, we, we hopefully we've gone digital enough in that process. But that piece of information, and, you know, of course, there's the big ones of, you know, I have a wedding in December. I'm trying to get, you know, a brand new smile for my daughter's wedding. Those are big pieces, right? Those are the obvious ones. So I, I try not to use the obvious examples, Margaret. You and I always talk about this, right? Don't take the layups, right? Take the more challenging route that's a little more subtle. Because those are what are more valuable for team members that we work with in practices all the time. Those are the ones that stick. Those are the ones that really have the most value. And that's the ones that I try to bring forward for sure. Hey, sorry to interrupt the show, but I got something that's going to provide a ton of value to you. So we've been doing a series called Ask Gary where people send in their questions and we answer them live on the show. So we wanted to answer the question today of Val. But before we do that, if you have any questions, email them in at askgary at smcnational.com or you can DM us on social media or leave a comment below. So this question came in from Val and she wanted to know how do different markets impact marketing costs? So I recently just 
just had a customer who was actually stuck behind a mountain and it really was impacting their cost per lead. I've also seen people who have offices near borders or rivers. Uh, you see this a lot in the Northwest up by New York and New Jersey. And it's really, really important that you understand those markets before you get involved with them in, on the marketing side because traffic flow will impact that and it is not straightforward. So you can be hit by borders, rivers, bridges, mountains, all of these things do impact your marketing. And a lot of times the answers are not entirely clear until you start marketing. So you always wanna look at a map first, then you want to start testing, then you want to scale from there. All right, so guys, this is so good. And we could go for a long time on this, but it is complicated. It's not an easy thing to do. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. If someone wants to learn more about this, Margaret, you can go first. How, how can people get in touch with you and then Greg to to actually have some like an overview of what they're actually doing and dive into that? Margaret, why don't why don't you share the easiest way to get in contact with you and then Greg? Uh, so Margaret at i3 Ignite, or you can always call my cell at uh, 830-237-1789. And if you're interested in working together, I always do a one hour free consult with you. Um, awesome. So, and Greg, what, how you can get me. what's your, what's your information, Greg? Yeah. So the easiest way to get a hold of me, my email address is Greg at dental consult for the number four, the letter U.com. Um, or of course you can reach out on my cell 602-743-5262. And I also do complimentary, I call them discovery calls. It's really just a chat about where you're at with business. And if I can't help you, Margaret probably can. So we <laughs> collaborate all the time. So if you get one or the other, uh, a lot of times we end up both. working together. Um, <laughs> or both. Yeah. Sometimes you get a two. Yeah. Just depends on what your need based is. Uh, which, we which we is enjoy so working cool. together. <laughs> yeah. Awesome job. It's usually a good time. <laughs> these, these, between both of them, uh, between both of you guys, you guys know just about everything that you could know about Full Arch, especially when it comes to the operational side. So thank you for coming on, sharing your, your wisdom with the audience and super excited uh, to share this with the world. Great job, guys.